Hader Econ students, as economic students, were often asked to evaluate the usefulness of different economic measurements. We've already done a video on evaluating GDP and what its shortcomings are as a representation of society's well-being. In this video, we're going to look at the unemployment rate. We're going to talk about what the shortcomings of the unemployment rate are, why it may not give us all the information we really need to know about the well-being of a nation's workforce. Enjoy the video. Please subscribe to my channel and head over to econclassroom.com for more resources for economic students and teachers. In this video, we're going to talk about the limitations and the shortcomings of the unemployment rate as a measure of the health of a country's workforce. Now, you should have already watched the videos on the definition of the unemployment rate and how the unemployment rate is calculated, but we're going to review what that calculation is really quickly before we move on to the shortcomings of the unemployment rate. So it's very important to understand what it is that the unemployment rate actually measures in a country. Unemployment is simply defined as an individual who is actively seeking work but unable to find it. Now, in order to be considered unemployed, an individual must have been seeking work in the last four weeks. So the unemployment rate is the percentage of people who are either employed or unemployed who are actively seeking work and unable to find a job. But to be considered unemployed, you have to have looked for a job in the last four weeks. Now, that obviously is going to exclude a lot of people in the country who may not have jobs but wish that they did. So let's talk about what the unemployment rate does not measure. It does not include what we call discouraged workers. Another word for discouraged workers is marginally attached workers. That's kind of a fancy way of describing somebody who has looked for a job in the last year, but not looked for a job in the last four weeks because they've given up or become discouraged. A discouraged worker or a marginally attached worker is not considered unemployed, even though they don't have a job and they wish they did have a job. The reason is they haven't looked for a job in the last four weeks. The unemployment rate does not count discouraged workers. It considers them, in fact, not even part of the labor force. An individual who's not actively looking for a job and doesn't have a job is simply not in the labor force and therefore is not measured by the unemployment rate. Another category of workers who are not measured by unemployment are what we call underemployed workers. Somebody who is underemployed is somebody who is working part-time but wishes they were working full-time. Consider somebody who just got a job at a retail store for 20 hours work each week. This person may wish that they're working 40 hours. They may consider themselves unemployed for half the week because they're only working half as much as they want to be. However, according to the government, such an individual is not considered unemployed, and therefore the official unemployment figure does not represent their situation very well. So we've identified what the unemployment rate does measure, and we've described two things that the unemployment rate does not measure. Discouraged workers, who are those who have given up looking for a job but still wish they could find one, and underemployed workers, those who are working part-time in a job and wish they could be working full-time. You may be thinking now the unemployment rate is a pretty lousy measure of the health of a country's labor force. Well, in the United States, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which measures unemployment, is perfectly aware of the official unemployment rate shortcomings. So the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, has developed alternative measures to unemployment beyond just the headline unemployment rate. In fact, when you read in the newspaper or hear in the news that the unemployment rate has fallen or the unemployment rate has risen, that is a measure that the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, calls U3. This is the headline rate defined above in this video. However, for a broader measure of unemployment, the BLS has developed something called U6. U6 is the headline rate. It's the percentage of people actively searching for jobs and unable to find them. Plus, it includes marginally attached workers, such as discouraged workers, and underemployed workers. So it might be useful to compare the headline unemployment rate of U3 to the U6 broader measure of unemployment just to see how far off what we see in the newspapers actually is from the situation experienced by millions of people in a country. Those who have given up looking for jobs but still wish they had one and those who have jobs but wish they were working full time and instead are only working part time. So let's look at some real data really quick just to see how great the difference is between these two measures. All right, here we have some recent data from the BLS website. We've got all the different measures of unemployment from U1, which is a very narrow measure of unemployment, to U6, which is the broadest measure of unemployment. The one we see in the headlines, U3, have a look at this. This is the total unemployed 
as a percentage of the labor force. In other words, this is the official unemployment rate. As we just described though, there is a broader measure of unemployment called U6, which is the total unemployed plus all persons marginally attached to the labor force, plus the total employed part-time for economic reasons as a percentage of the civilian labor force, plus persons marginally attached to the labor force. In other words, this is the officially unemployed people, those who have looked for jobs in the last four weeks, plus those who gave up looking for jobs more than four weeks ago, and those who wish that they had full-time jobs but are only working part-time. So let's compare those two. U3, since March of 2017, we've got the U3 unemployment rates here. 4.6%, down to 4.1%, up to 4.5%, to today's unemployment rate in March of 2018 of 4.1%. The U6 unemployment rate, the broadest measure of unemployment, has averaged almost double that in every month. So today, for example, or at least last month in March, the U6 unemployment rate was at 8% compared to the 4% official unemployment rate. So this 8% represents the percentage of the total labor force plus discouraged workers plus underemployed workers that are either unemployed, discouraged, or underemployed. So in this video, we have introduced a broader measure of unemployment, one that includes both the discouraged workers or the marginally attached workers in an economy and the underemployed workers. You've got the definitions here, and you now know what limitations the unemployment rate that we read about in the newspapers actually has. Here we go. One step at a time, no.